the mighty Sephos on the defense. Guys, welcome to the channel as well. If you're just joining, this is CB Rivals. If you haven't already watched it every single Sunday, there will be battles from different houses in the, out of the two different groups. There's group A and B. They'll be fighting off against each other in the league system. For a win, you get three points. For a defense, uh, for a tie, sorry, you get one point each. And obviously, after everybody has battled each other, the winners of each group will play against each other to see the, the overall winner of the tournament. After that, then we will split into two leagues. It'll be the top three verse, uh, from one league will go into the top league and then the remainder of the bottom ones will split into the bottom league. So depending on half and half of the leagues, we'll split it down and it'll be like the top four winners versus the top four winners and the top four, there'll be kind of a league system structure between relegation and promotion and depending on how well this goes and how long it goes on, obviously plenty of teams involved, plenty of people want to get involved as well if you haven't already followed it and you've got a house or you've got a team in plan that you want to get involved, do sign up to it, join the Discord for it. It is a, if I was to do, if I, did I set, I set up a thing before it, didn't I? Did I set up a CB Rivals? No, I didn't. I thought I did um, for a tournament, but yeah, it's uh, it's going to be involved. You can get into the Discord for it for CB Rivals, and uh, yeah, just just register a team, get involved. Even if you just enjoy watching them, join the Discord, get to see all the chat in between, get to see the league structure. We will show you afterwards the current standings and the uh, standings going forward. But this is the first time I've casted any of these fights here, guys, so... I don't know what's going on with this said map, but... Here we go. Here we go. There we go, right. There we go. Right, so this time round, as you can see, Set for a similar idea to Surf Slayers. There is no units around apart from one set of cab that is sitting there on the point. Every other units are away in the back. All the heroes on the wall. Just being a deterrent, just watching, stopping people from getting on the walls. It's a very interesting strategy. There is one unit on the a village watchman on the supply point as well, just to slow them down. But nothing really major in terms of defense, Sephos. As you can see, unit wise. Plenty of serfs getting used to push the uh, the siege towers, but nobody's going to really take them down because there is no artillery being used, bar the ones that are on the map. And then you have the units. It's all down to units here. So we've got some javelins on the attack. We've got some IPGs this time around. We've got more IPGs this time around than we had in the last one, at least. There's two sets guaranteed on the attack. There's a couple of sets on the defense here. Um, yeah, there's a lot more on the defense. Than there was on a, any of the defenses of the last one. He actually dies to. Oh, what was that? Good achievement. Oh, no, you don't. Missed on one kill. A couple of heroes killed there. One each. Broken Vortexes got picked up a kill against a dual blade. So I don't know what the dual blade was doing. Did he run out somewhere? You get carried away. Dual blade shouldn't be the one dying to the glaive there at that point. I have no idea what they were doing or where they were fighting. But that's what happens when I'm looking at the wrong part. So as you can see, like I said, they're going to be given A and B here by the looks of it. All Cephas guys are doing is just baiting them out, watching them do that, and they're going to jump in and defend the main home point. It's been a good strategy for Cerslers. It worked for them. Will it work for Cephas? I don't know how well, or if they play against each other, or played each other, or scrimmed each other before. And maybe that's why they, they have an idea of what they're going to do there. But definitely... Jams it just slowing them down, just just slowing them down for no reason. Couple of heroes just 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 to be in a, that really slow, annoying kind of player. I don't think Jams is going to get out of this here, alive here. I don't think his backflip is available, but he's jumping. He's going to keep causing an issue. He does get away. He gets on his horse, but the pike player is going to try and or the spear player is going to try and chase him down. He should have got him, the spear player. To be fair, we'll go see. We'll watch how this chase pans out here. Ah, oh, lots of heroes are coming to survive him. FDS Light has a run away, and they survive. That's that's what it is. Teamwork calls it out. The team come out to stop him from dying. Uh, it keeps him alive in the battle there. 
and we're at 15v15, C will be getting capped, and it's all just going to be all about that final end cap push. It's all about the setups, all about the unit setups here. Iron Reapers, we've got Modas, you've got Palace Guards, you've got obviously uh, Javelineers, a couple of units of IP, uh, IPGs here, yes, as well. And we've got some Bombards. So, on the defense, same idea, some Pike, lots of uh, Flamers, a couple of Flamers, a couple of Senjis, mixed bag of units, no shield walls, though. no shield wall, nobody uses shield walls. What is a shield wall? <laughs> I thought with the use of the IP, uh, the Imperial Spear Guards, people would be using shield walls more. FDS Light is dead. He's being picked and grabbed. Never missed. Picks him off with a sniper shot. And Frank dies as well. Sevos. Where are they getting these kills? Because I don't see any fights going on. Where are they dying? They're just dying. Like, what is going on? Where, where are these fights? Where, where did they fight? I didn't see any fights going on. There's another one down. Damien is down as well. Lots of heroes trying to force herself up on the stairwell. This block of vortex going to die though. No, he survives the fall. But they're just taking the that spear. All the spears are dying. Several doctors going down. Fell, fell down by mistake, but they're sending a tribe to the units up top. They've got some grey hairs that are just about to go on top of the wall. And that might be really bad timing for the unit, but I think they'll get away with the majority of their health. So IPGs do take some damage there, but their own IP, uh, IP, ISGs will take some damage. Just picking up all the kills here. Just picking up all the unit kills. Whittling them down a little bit. Lots of heroes on that wall though, so whether they use that as the bait, and they go try and send some units into the point here, but... Lots of heroes up on this wall again. It's kind of like a bait and switch people are trying to do. They're trying to bait units up, heroes up onto the wall, use them, make them grow up with units to try and get them flanked. And That's just a set of uh, grey hairs dressed like monks. But yeah, nothing major push-wise. Not really any pushes going on. It is all units. I, I don't know why you send up your javelins up the top there, but that treb... It's not actually going to hit any of the units. Like, such such an unlucky treb. Might have done a little bit of work, not so much, but the push is coming in from this left side gate here. FDS, light, Daddy Forbes setting a way forward. Anne Frank falls again. Anne Frank's died a couple of times now. Getting picked off by the dual blades, but what we were pushing here. Both pushes coming in pretty well here. It looks like... The blue side are doing a good job in terms of the push forward. Flamers. Oh, the defense of the Flamers. Oh, plenty of Flamers. An IPG march stops all that push of units coming in. Well, the Flamers tears into them. Simka, Runica are going to try and grab her on the back here. The Flamers definitely stopped the push pretty well there, but Hiachi has managed to get onto the point where everybody's moved and rotated off. So Hiachi's grabbing a few seconds on the point. And then he'll go bait around. Some of the heroes are on the back fighting here as well. Don't know if they were trying to bait off the units as well. But it's all about baiting. I feel like people are just using their bodies, using the units as a bait. Trying to get as many players to follow them as possible. And then use your opportunity after that. As you can see, you've got them trying to hold off on the back of the, the, the supply pot. So nobody can get any units here. Ayahoho is going to die though. I don't think he's going to survive that. Born Ludbrock is uh, is still there trying to get in. He's going to help out. Okay, Ho Ho. Ho Ho's doing a great job of holding that point there. He survived so long as a short sword on the point. Nobody could take any supply, but there's no pushes coming in. Which is, if you were going to do that, the push should be coming in from somewhere. But there's no units pushing anywhere at this point. They've got that supply point was defended for so long, and they, they didn't eventually get it. It was defended and stop from capping and getting units out and they needed to be pushed it. Banish needed to send their units through it. But Sephos rotated very well. They didn't overcommit. They had units kept in certain areas of the map that are key. Like in this little chokehold here, this little chokehold here as well. Um, making sure they had units set up there for that. Now we're going to get reset up here. Banished only have 10 heroes alive at this point in time. So we're waiting to get reset up. 
In terms of unit wise, we're still pretty even on unit wise. Lots of units deaths on the attack at the moment in time, but a lot of them were probably serfs and baited units. So we'll see how uh, how their strategy goes when it comes to the next push. This map is a nightmare to cast. This angles of the map. That's a nice treb. How is the treb going to hit here? It does hit a few of the units, not as many as they probably what almost killed their units outside the wall there. Cephalus just kind of rotating up on the wall, watching all the heroes pushing up on the wall. A lot of the short swords and longbows, but bubbles falls. Oh, look at that musket versus musket there. Another trebuchet comes in. He's still got nine of them left. That one reacted to some of them. Ariana falls. The Maul picks up the longsword. And that is it from them. You've got a lot of heroes managing to get themselves a wee foothold on top of the stairwell. Now they need to just hold on the wall for now. Well, the people rotate. Sendies are going to try and launch some shots up. Launch some grenades up on the wall there. And then you've got... Units around the corner here. It's only Fort Abrasio and a unit of palace guards on one side. You have IBGs here. You've set a Modal on the gate. And a set of... This is a good good wall wall set up. They're, they are already on the wall. They're set up. Now they just need it set up on another wall. If they were to come around both sides, that might work. That might be a nice pinch that they need. But they don't have the units anywhere else at this point in time. Oh, they're pushing out. Oh, Seth has been brave and pushing the units away from the wall as they rotate around. FDS like taking these units around. Units still up on the wall, just taking shots at them. But Seth is going to try and push up of that wall. Are they going to actually try and push? Are they just going to bait it as if they're going up. Senji's launching their grenades up on the wall. That arc is pretty sweet there. It did do some work there on the defense there. Broken Vortex falls to Hamo. I'm sure Rookin Vortex was on the wall at some point as well. That is unlucky. We have eight trebs left. I think in terms of this, Sephos with the added unit value just now, slowly whittling them down, even though they're on the, the, the defense. Should be the other way around. Yo, Denim Brewer, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the clan, appreciate it. Okay, so the treb here from Banish, is this going to connect? That connects very nicely. That is three treb shots that have hit the point that will need a rotation off of the wall. So now we need to pay attention because Azaps are, whoever had the Azaps has died, their units are going straight into murder. Straight into death. Oh, 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 with another treb here. Only six left. There is nowhere to push. There's no units pushing anywhere. And units are pushing out to negative. Negative is going to rotate his units and they're going to get forced off to the back. He's legit going to get weakened and his units are just going to fall here. Negative should never have turned his back on them. I know it's palace guards, but it's palace guards and flamers that have just forced their way out of the wall. Broken vertex is going to get chased down as well. Negative does get killed and the unit's all gone pretty much. That is a wasted unit push, but well done for a good push out there from Sephos. Now we're all st stacked up on this right side. FDS like Vortex, Daddy Forbes, all that ready. One of the mogs have been grabbed. Everybody's pouncing on the mall. He gets the mall. Scabies falls down to his death. Now they've got to try and think about a push into the wall now. Fort Abrasio is set up on the right hand side with a unit of charging grey hairs. But the push is coming in. That's a full on push coming from the sides of Banished. Where are they going to go from here? They push both sides, left and right. Daddy Forbes using his units well there on the right hand side. But. What units are going to come pinching in here? They should have been pushing in from the other gate and the wall, but their units on the wall are gone. Sephos defend that very well, push them straight back out. Athena is the only person alive for one second there, but he or she dies on the point. And now it's Daddy Forbes, the lone pole axe player left. Three people alive on the side of Banished. Fifteen people still alive on Sephos. Sephos just standing at the top of the wall here. 
doing nothing. The units down here are just going to get picked off. And so far we are at 981 units versus 633 from Banish. Looks like all of that suiciding units on the wall is starting to take its toll. They are starting to lose a lot of uh, value with numbers. And Cephalus have just managed to pick all them extra kills up. And an extra unit of kills up. We've got six minutes left. There's still a chance. There is still a chance, but it's gonna have to need a better, better push than that. Like if you're gonna push from one side there, you have to have another push side, and you can't go all out and commit the whole side because you will just get pinched. You will get pinched into the center point, and that will be your last push if that is the case. So you definitely need to try and focus up, get some units on the other sides. Looking at numbers here, as you can see, unit kill wise, pretty low on the banished side. Sephos uh, doing a pretty decent job of it overall. More a majority of the players getting some unit kills, but on the other uh, on the attack, there are some units just not getting. Some people, the heroes, just not got any unit kills whatsoever. Sephor none, negative none, Jorn block none. It's not, it's not good. You don't. You can't. You can't win games like that. That you definitely need to get something. You need to use your unit to get some unit kills. If you're not getting any kills from your unit, you're legit. That's it. That, there's no point in even bringing a unit. You wasted that leadership. A complete waste. Bubbles falls here. Banish down to 13 heroes a lot. And sorry, I've got the hiccups now because I've been. I just finished eating straight on. Okay, so Cephas are going to try and make it into that left gate. They're pushing around that way, trying to take the units off of the rotation. But as you can see, they are set up pretty well in the center here. Units set up everywhere, ready to kind of pounce wherever they need to go. You've got Senjis and a set of Fort Abrasio on the right gate. Born Ludbrook's going to go around, but the Flamers, the Flamers! Doing some work. Flamers, Born Lux is already down. Longsword doesn't even survive long enough to survive or even pop a heal. The push is coming in, but it does look like the units are all rotating around. You've got a set of palace guards ready to charge. There they are. Palace guards will charge right now and get ready to brace. They are braced up ready and it looks like the units have just whittled down now. We are down, down to 390 units on the attack. That was literally just like throwing your unit straight away into the fire and them just being burnt to a crisp. Very well done from Cephalus, that was great, like I think, I think we could almost say that that's it, like we could almost say this is going to be it, negative is going to fall down here, Sephir dies as well in the meantime, there is only three heroes alive on the banished side of things, that's FDS lights, Bubbles and Damien, but yeah, this was not the way they were expecting this to go I don't think, as you can see here, 11 euro, unit, uh, hero kills, A versus a 59. 59 hero kills on the Cephos side. How many times can you die, boys? I didn't, I didn't even know that was possible. 59 deaths. That is, that is madness. That is madness. 59 heroes have died to 11. FDS Light is going to be able to get nailed here, as you can see. We're watching this fight. FDS Light, these guys are just chilling on the point now. He's just watching. FDS Light's fighting 1v1. And, and now his teammate realizes he's getting watched. Rona, Ruga Kano, Corona comes to help. Now he's helping. Now he helps. They wanted to 1v1. And he realizes he's live. FDS lights like, no, I wanted to be um no. <laughs> that is the most fun we're getting out of this. There is no there is not really much of an attack coming on here. As you can see, they are too busy fighting down there, and now we're gonna get a push here from Banished. The last push of the battle is gonna come in here. We're gonna zoom right in here. Oh, and yeah, the units are dead. That is it. Woodcutters can't hold against palace guards. 
Danium, trying to just use these abilities, but you're not going to do nothing against Palace Garage. We have 1 minute 59 left. Literally nobody left alive. Unit wise, all the units are dead. Oh, and there's the push out. That's it. Just fill out, send them now. Where are we going? Damian. All, that, all these guys just going to get picked off now. We're down to nine heroes alive. The fights are going on, but Ariana dies. Runa Kona dies. Bubbles dies. We've got negative alive. You still got FTS light alive, but he might die here as well. FTS lights quite a quite a strong surviving short sword, but he will he die here? He's got a unit supporting him though, so we might be okay. Sephos, Lonk, surviving and getting out of there, but all the heroes coming to support it now. That is it for the defenders. Once again, Allenberg was defended here. Sephos with a similar strategy to Surfslers, and Surfslers went on to win their battle. Sephos have also went on to win their battle, which shows that defending the main point and setting up for the main point properly will win you this battle, Allenberg. Home point's all you need. There we go. Now we've got two heroes alive, Broken Vortex and Negative. Negative is just sitting back here with Doctor. Just chilling on the wall. Oh, now he's going to get attacked. And they're just going to 1v1 it. Or are they going to get 2 v one Oh, he's going to get 2 v one Everybody pushing out. Broken Vortex. Negative's alive as well. I assume Broken Vortex. We can chill out here. Somewhere. Negative is getting chased down all the way out. Joan of Arc. But Negative dies to Scissorum. Scissorum. And nothing left. There we go. 1-0. To Sephos on the defense. Allenberg defended well. Daddy Forbes has done an MVP on the side of Banish. To be honest, in terms of units, like there was such a massive variation of units. Not very many people actually doing anything. It felt like units were just not getting used very well at all. Broken Vortex, I'm sorry to see that. That's that's a bit of a depressing scoreline. Um, no matter what. You can see there, that was very well defended from Sephos. Look at the S's on their team. Plenty of them. Plenty of hero kills, though. So many hero kills. A Lone Sword as the Pike player with picking up 8. You've got Jamshed as Musket picking up 9. You've also got Never Miss as a Longbow picking up 9 hero kills. 24 assists. He was there everywhere defending everybody. Same with Athena with another 22 assists. Plenty plenty of work putting in and working together. They all, they're all picking up double figure of assists. It just shows you they're playing together, they're working together, they're, they're rotating together. Um, and you can see that on the terms of this. 75 hero kills versus 12. So since we last shot it, literally nothing changed majorly. Troops killed 1300 versus 300. Like, th that's, that's, that's a thousand more unit kills almost on the side of Cephos. GG, Sephos, that's a game and a half. That's a that's a very top scoreline there. Banished, I'm sorry to see that. Even with Trebs, you guys struggled there on that one. It's a bit unlucky.